Welcome to your YouTube channel. God bless you. You are about to listen to a message from the throne of the Almighty God in the lips of a pastor. Your blessings are with you as you listen and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contacts as you click the select icon. Please like, subscribe and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Welcome to church. Let us pray. The Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will come before you because of the mighty God. As we look at your word now, you will touch every life here and every life across the airwaves in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Today we shall be looking at Let Your Good Words Speak for You. In the series, As to the Call of the Almighty God, part 172. Let your good words for you. And this type of topic of this sermon or teaching debunks the erroneous teaching that says that we are saved only by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. That whatever we do, whatever we say, wherever we go, whatever we do with our body, doesn't matter. That if you are saved, even when you go into the sin of immorality or adultery, even when you are a pathetic liar, even when you pilfer, you steal, even when you insult other people, use bad language on other people, name calling and all of those things, even when you patronize voodoo strands, even when you do all of such things, it doesn't matter that you are still saved. But that's not what the Bible teaches us. If you are saved, the Lord expects that you manifest the fruits of your repentance. And then you show the fruits of your repentance. Bring forth fruit meant for repentance. You don't say that you are a student and yet you don't even have a pen with you. You don't say that you are a student and you don't have a notebook or anything to show that you are a student. You don't have an ID card, you have no notes, you have no writing material and you don't go to school, whether online or physical or visible teaching, you are not involved in anything and you don't even have a certificate, yet you claim that you are a student. You don't say you are born again, yet we can't see the righteousness of Christ manifested in your life. You don't say that you are saved, and yet we cannot see the grace of God upon your life. We shall be looking at let your good words speak for you. From a reference, 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 43, 44, and 45. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 43. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me, what hast thou done? And Jonathan told him and said, I did but taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand. And lo, I must die. And Saul said, God do so, and more also, for thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. That's 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 44. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 45, and the people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who had wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid, as the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground. For he had wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not. If you look at that verse critically, Jonathan said, Just by the edge of the road, he tasted it. It didn't look as, as though he sat down, took the honey into a plate or into a vessel or with a spoon or whatever to eat or to lick the honey just by the edge of the rod. And somebody will say it was just a little lie. Somebody say it was just a little romance. It was just a little caressing. It was just it was just something very little that I did. Well, God also judged me for that. If it is not whole truth, it seems as though you have not even said anything at all. It was just I touched the memory plant of the opposite sex. And that didn't take time. I, of course, I hugged for a while. And uh, I hugged for a while. We are talking about one minute, one, one second passed, two seconds passed, and there was transmission of biochemical flow within you and that woman, your committed sin, and the Lord is against such. It was just for a while. That I, you know, I, I, I just uh, gave my nod, I gave my approval to that ego. It was just for a few minutes. No, look at it. It touched the honey with the edge, the rod. 
It, it just like it threw the honey into the plate. Let's be very careful. Because what that thing that will look at, that look at very little and say it doesn't matter. It was just for a while that I checked the porn on my phone. It was just for a while that I watched that porn video. It was just for a while after you know, watching it for like 10 seconds before I switched it off or before I flip over that page. No, that is evil. If you set your eyes on the porn on your phone or on the TV inadvertently, Without knowing, you flip it off immediately. That's when the Lord will know. That's when you know that indeed that you have a threat for that. We shall look at possessing holiness to overcome challenges. Possessing holiness that will overcome challenges. You look at this now. Jonathan possessed the attribute of holiness, the quality of holiness. He possessed it because at a time when in the camp, he left the father, the commander in chief of the armed forces of Israel. He left the other team members, he left the soldiers, he took his servant and they went. Discomfited the Philistines and fought. He was moved because everything that happened after he left showed that God orchestrated it. There was an element of holiness in him before God could work with him. If you don't have the blessings of holiness in your life, the presence of holiness in your life, God cannot work with you as a matter of fact. The presence of God in your life is the presence of holiness, not only that. And look at it now. It was able judged, and the death sentence was passed on him. And the people said, This is our hero. This man, this man that has been there for us, you cannot die. This man cannot be killed. They whisk him away, away from his father. They whisk him away for safety. Whisk him away, they scamp out for safety. And, and that kind of a thing you can also see in, in, in Nehemiah. The Jewish nation was so polluted. It was so bad. It was so bad. And it was so bad that you cannot even trust any of the ruler in the Jewish nation. You cannot even trust any of the kings in the Jewish nation. And the people were impoverished. The people were in a very serious situation. And the people are taking money in the ministry. And the people were so indebted. And there was famine in land, everything went dead end. It was like a cool desert. It was something very terrible in the Jewish nation. And Nehemiah came to a rescue. And the rulers were not up to their billings. And the kings were not up to their billings. All of those people. Look at Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 4. They were also that said, We have borrowed money for the king's tribute and that upon our lands and vineyard. And the people were plunged into debt. The people were plunged into penury. The people were plunged into wantiness and they had issues. But Nehemiah went for the rescue and he was trying to resolve all of these issues. That we need to free these people from indebtedness. We need to free them from the hunger and all the problems and all of that. In Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 19, think upon me, my God, for good according to all that I've done for these people. Because they did that and he was praying to the Lord and said, God, look at me now. I've done and trying to rectify things, fix things up in the country, fix things up in this Jewish nation. Now think upon me, my God, for my good, for, for good, according to all that I've done for these people. And that was the statement of Nehemiah. He was making reference to what he has done to the people. It was a righteous work. It is not out of place, it was not out of context. When we we'll make reference, when we we'll talk to the Lord and we we'll ask him and say, Lord, for what I have done, save this and do that and bless me and do it is not out of place. When you wrought righteousness for the Lord and you have a commitment before the Lord and you have consecrated your life before God and in that kind of situation and your life is being threatened by the opposition or by the devil or by the agents of darkness, you go before the Lord and you stand before the Lord and say, you know, Lord, I've consecrated my life, I've committed my life to the gospel and you know I have this target to win 5,000 souls for you, 20,000 souls for you, 1 million souls for you, and this is my target. And my life is under threat and opposition by the devil. You see, Lord, the Lord will fight for you. You don't just keep your mouth and say, uh, well, if it is the will of God, then let it be. If it is the will of God, let it be. You will stand and produce your cause. Give a strong reason why the Lord will fight your battle and the Lord will help us. The Holy Spirit will share so speak to us in two points. Point number one, sinful and sentenced to death. Point number two, saved and sanctified to devotedness. Sinful and sentenced to death. Point number two, saved and then sanctified to devotion or devotedness. Yes, of course, if you look at the light of the scripture we are studying today, we are looking at the word of God today, 
Jonathan was seen as a disobedient citizen, a disobedient soldier. And in that light, we we'll look at him like a sinner. Of course, that was the reason why God could not speak to Saul, even when he sought the voice of the Lord, and even when he wanted to hear from the Lord. And there was a dead end, there was a spiritual blackout. Yet, yes, of course, he was sinful and sentenced to death by his biological father, sentenced to death by the commander in chief of the armed forces of Israel. He was sentenced to death by the king. And so, if he was sentenced to death by the king, it means that he was sentenced to death by the nation, by the country. It was a, a capital punishment, so to speak. And now, point number two those sentenced, those sinful, and sentenced to death, there was a rescue. They were saved and sanctified to devotedness. And when he was rescued from that death sentence by the state, by the country, when he was sentenced to death, he was saved and sanctified. And then his commitment increased. He was more devoted to his country. We shall look at point number one sinful and sentenced to death. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 43, then Saul said unto Jonathan, Let me, what that hast done? And Jonathan told him and said, I did but taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand, and lo, I must die. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 44, and Saul answered, God do so, and more also, for thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. Now, you see, he was disobedient. And for every sin that you commit, there's a death sentence. Let me tell you this now. You see this kind of event that happened in Israel between Jonathan and King Saul. It's a typical example or an exemplified case of what the world is about today, or what we are into today. Now, man itself with the Adamic nature is in sin. You don't need to lie before you become a sinner. You don't need to steal before you become a sinner. You don't need to kill before you become a sinner. You are a sinner, a sinner by birth. And Christ came into the world to save us. And for every sin that you commit, if you do not repent, you are sentenced to death. But Christ came to rescue us from that death unto salvation, and to sanctify us to be devoted to worshiping Him. You see the case now. He sinned, he disobeyed, and then he was sentenced to death. Which means when we sin, if you have not repented, since you were born, you have not repented, and you have not accepted the Savior Lord Jesus Christ, there is a death sentence hanging on your head. That is to say, after the physical life here, and you die, there is a spiritual death awaiting you, all eternity in hellfire. Eternity, one billion years, eternity will have just begun. One hundred billion years, eternity, one trillion years, eternity will have just begun. You see, eternity is the lifetime of God. For every sin that you commit, that little lie, that little stealing, that, that doesn't matter. The money I took, honestly, I saw, I saw a million naira there, I saw five million naira there. I just took a fifteen naira. That was quite insignificant. It is zero point zero zero one. And so the owner will not feel that I took it. I understand that God will also see that it was just a little. That little money you call little, that is significant stealing that you claim it to be, will take you to eternal death in hell fire. Because you see, if the father knew, if the father had said, well, since you touch the honey by the edge of the rod in your hand, that's fine. It didn't show that you were actually eating or licking it all. You just did that. And you are excused. You see, every little thing we shall give account before God. And God expects holistic, perfect, expect us to come to Christ by His grace to live the life that can take you to pass through that pearly gate. Now, we're looking at the same full and sentence to death. Now, what we have read that Jonathan committed that evil. But there was an answer to that evil. There was an answer to the death penalty. The people that saw the good work that Jonathan had done, the people that enjoyed the good work that Jonathan had done, the people came for his rescue. We shall be looking at our only answer to the death sentence against us. Our only answer to the death sentence against us. In Acts chapter 10, verse 43, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name. Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. In Romans chapter 3, verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation 
through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ just like the people rescued Jonathan just like the people took and whisked Jonathan away just like the people took Jonathan and scampered for safety in the hands of Saul, King Saul. Just like that, Jesus Christ is the propitiation for our faith, for our sins. He is the reason why we receive remission of forgiveness of our sins. Jesus Christ, all of those people that rescued Jonathan, typified, exemplified, symbolized our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do you get that now? And then we'll be looking at death penalties can come to us in various ways. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will want to rescue us for whatever death sentence that is upon us. There are people walking on the street today, and they are in school today, and they are eating or playing today, and they are driving today. There is a death sentence hanging on their head. And that's why you cannot tell and say, oh, but I saw him yesterday and he's dead. And I saw him last night and he's dead. They promised me this last week and he's dead. And you need to know whether a death sentence is hanging on your head. But if, in case you do not even know, if you rest your faith on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whatever death sentence that is hanging on your head will be taken care of. We shall be looking at four categories of death sentences on people. First category, number one, death sentence by your biological family. You have done something heinous. You have done or committed a dastardly act. You have done something evil. And the family and the father and the mother will say, this youth, you cannot continue to be our son. And from now henceforth, where you can't be anymore. And they go to the newspaper and they say, we don't, this son ceases to bear the name of the family. And then you are cast out and uh, and say, well, they will see you near this compound anymore, will kill you and will so, we'll take you to the law enforcement agent. Whatever it is, if the death sentence is by your biological family, or there's somebody in your biological family, and they have all this kind of evil past and say, I will see your back end, I will see you go to the sea street. And so the person I saw tomorrow go to the street, I will kill you, I will do all of those things. It is a death sentence following you. Jesus Christ is the reason why the death sentence will not come to you. Jesus Christ will be is your rescuer. If only you can cry to him. Death sentence number two. Death penalty by your nation. You have done something evil. You have flattered the rules. And you have committed offense that is punishable by the law. And then you are scheduled to be killed. The death sentence. And they say, okay, we'll use lethal weapon. Or we'll do it by hanging. Or we'll shoot you at the at the, at the given position. Or whatever it is. Or they'll kill you by injection. And all of those things. You know what? Jesus Christ can turn, can change the trend. And can touch the authority. And they will have pardon upon you, and you will be free from that death sentence. So death sentence number three, death penalty by the world of darkness. And because maybe I don't know, maybe because you are serving the Lord, and you have grace to serve the Lord continually, and the world of darkness will say, this person is a threat. It will not terminate him now. <laughs> and so, so, and so time, this boy, or this man, or this girl, or this woman will cause more havoc. Let's kill him. Let's kill him. You can kill him slowly, anyhow you can want to do it. Kill him. Kill him. Well, and they try. And they come around you to kill, and they see the host of angels around you, and they couldn't. And they try every means possible, and they couldn't say, Well, this person is on our death row. And any agent across the world, if he goes to the north of this country, or to the south or the west of this country, wherever he is, get him down and kill him. And they also check in what's to check your family and see if there's anybody there that has the same evil power that belongs to the work of darkness, and they'll give the person the message and say, Well, that person, it may be your brother, it may be your father, it may be your sister, it may be your mother. Well, it's not dead true. And you know you belong to us, so it's not dead true. Start working on him over there, find a way to kill him, find a way to inject things into his body, if possible, and find a way to kill him. If you are a death penalty or death sentence in the books of the work of world of darkness, as long as you have Jesus Christ in your life, you'll be rescued and nothing will happen. They will all fall like a pack of cards and God will judge every one of them in his own time. And then sentence number four, death penalty by your sinful nature. Of course, anybody that has not been born again, anybody that is not a child of God, there's a death penalty hanging on that neck, hanging on that person. And the Lord will say, the only way to rescue yourself from that and from all these death penalties, if you have not known the Lord, is that number one, you admit your sinful nature, you admit your sinful Adamic nature, you admit and then repent of your sin, and ask the Almighty God for forgiveness, and you have promised the Lord that you won't go back to evil again. 
and if you can do that and the Lord will have mercy upon you, he will forgive you and then you will collaborate with, with Christ and the Christ will be in you and the Lord will be in your life. All those death sentences by your biological family will be removed and the death sentence by your nation will be removed. The death sentence by the world of darkness will be removed and the death sentence because of the sinful and damnic nature will be done with. Because you know, Christ will be the center of your heart. We've heard testimonies of people who had death sentences hanging on their neck and they were scheduled to be killed at the point and Christ intervened. And then you see they were freed completely. The Lord will come true for you. Our Lord Jesus Christ will come true for you and nothing will stop you. The purpose of God for your life you will fulfill. And the number of your days that are not, no number of your days you will fulfill. No devil, no word of darkness, not even your sinful nature, not in your nation, not even your biological family will stop you and will stop you from fulfilling your destiny. And the prayer points for you and I are, let us pray to be obedient to the Almighty God. Let us pray to be free from any death penalty and waiting to kill your joyfulness and existence. Second green. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 18, now there is remission of these. There is no more offering for sin. Jesus Christ has paid the death penalty on the cross of Calvary. And that is also to point number two: saved and sanctified to devotedness. You see, Jonathan was 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 sinful. He disobeyed the law, and then he was sentenced to death. And then he was rescued by the people who knew what he had done previously. And so that was his good work. And now Jesus Christ, we were all sentenced to death. And for those of us that have been born again, that have given our lives to Christ, we're all sentenced to death because we're sinful. And now Christ has saved us and sanctified us to do what? To be more devoted to him. Jonathan was rescued by the people. Go read the records. As he was rescued by the people, he became more devoted to his mission. And so when you are saved and sanctified, you expect that you want you're more devoted to him because without him, you can't have bread in your nursery. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 45, and the people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan die? Who had wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid. And the Lord live it. They shall not want hell, they said, fall to the ground. For he had wrought with God this day to the people rescued Jonathan that he died. Now look at this now closely. When your life is meaningful to the kingdom, let me tell you something. Let me tell you, even when Satan appeared himself and said, Look at me, uh, the fallen angel Lucifer and the devil, the ruler in the world of darkness in hellfire, they cannot kill you. Not a single strand of your head will fall to the ground if you have a right standing with God. And your life is meaningful to the Almighty God. Look at it, that this man has wrought something in Israel and we are witnesses and we experience the great things that the Lord used him for. Not a strand of his hair will fall to the ground. Look at it now. Because, like I told you, all of these things are symbol of what is going on right now between heaven and earth, between Christians and heaven, between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. When your life is meaningful to God, you are doing service unto the Lord. Not a single strand of your hair. Now, you won't see anybody talking to you, but that's the decision of Jesus Christ. That is the decision of Trinity. That is the decision of the Almighty God. The decision of the Holy Spirit. The decision of the host of heaven. Not a single strand of this person. That the word of darkness says he will die. Not a single strand of this person. That the nation has condemned to death. Not a single strand of his head will fall to the ground. That his biological form has condemned to death. Not a single strand of his head will fall to the ground. That his academic nature has condemned to death. And you see, your life will keep on. So you see, the secret to living long, Longer life, to having longer life. The secret to overcoming the devil is to have a right standing with the Almighty God. Jonathan had a right standing with the people. He did expect. If, if he had not responded to the movement of the Holy Ghost, of, of the Holy Spirit upon his life, Spirit of God upon his life, to go and defeat and fight the Philistines, that record wouldn't have been there. If you are a man given to the Spirit and you are serving the Lord, in your little way, you may not have the opportunity of planting the podium to preach to people, but in your little way, you are serving the Lord, interceding for the church and interceding for the men of God, interceding for the work and the progress of the word of God on earth. You are a, an invaluable, wonderful child of God, and God will hold you and keep you, and not a single strand of your hair will fall to the ground. Every good that we do comes back to you, to speak for you in this lifetime and eternity. Be intentional in doing good always in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Be intentional 
in doing good always in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We shall be looking at doing good is preferred to doing evil. In Psalm 107 verse 9, For it satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. In Psalm 119 verse 68, That are good and do as good. Teach me thy statutes. That is the heart of someone who wants to do, who wants to have an impact in his world, in his own generation. That good. Referring to God now and do as good. Teach me the statues. And you remember Jesus Christ said, No one is good but, the, but God Almighty. The God my Almighty is, is goodness personified. And so that good. Or the Almighty God is good. And that do is good. Teach me the statues. If you're always seeking to know God's statues, it means that you are ready to live the life that He wants you to live. If you're always seeking God to teach you His statues, it means that lying is not your problem because you will be very hesitant to lie. If you're always seeking God to teach you a statute, it means that committing morality will become problematic to you because you cannot even see yourself, carry yourself to do evil. If you're always seeking God to do a statute, it means that you don't want to involve yourself in anything that will come between you and your master, between you and your God. If you're always seeking the statutes of God, it means that you don't want anything that will encroach and become a defilement in your communication with the Almighty God. If you're always seeking God to know His statutes, it means that to cause other people become very heavy on your tongue. If you're always seeking God to do God's statutes, it means that you don't want to put your hand in, in, in anything evil, whether you are being watched or not, whether you are being seen or not, in the closet and open. If you're always seeking God to do His statutes, you want to live more like Christ. You want to do more like Christ. If you're always seeking God to do more like Christ, to do to seek His statutes, it means that when you hear, when you hear worldly song, you hear this evil, you see this evil on your TV screen, you turn away your eyes, you shut your ears, and you take your hands off them. If you are always seeking God to do a statue, it means that when you see somebody else's nakedness, you remove your eyes. If you are always seeking God to do a statue, you will not go out with your mini skirt showing all parts of your body. If you are always seeking God to do a statue, you won't dress like this and show off your mama and crown for other people to become a seducer. If you always seeking God to do a statue, it means that you will not drink alcohol. You will not smoke cigarettes, you will not jump back down, you will not be an arm robber. If you are always seeking God to do God's statues, you want to live for Him and you want to do what He always wants you to do. We shall be looking at how to know the Almighty God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 14, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. The Father sent His Son, the only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to be the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. No other person is the Savior of the world. No crusader is the Savior of the world. Only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. First John chapter 4 verse 14, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. If you want to save from the death penalty looming on your head by the nation, by the family, by your damnic nature, and by the world of darkness, we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. He is the one that will save you from all your death sentence, by the world of darkness, by your biological family, by the atomic nature, by, by your nature. He is the one that can save you. Wherever you are, listen to the sound of my voice. And you are, have you been cancerated? And you have been sentenced to death? Wherever you are, listen to the sound of this voice. If only you can turn in your life unto the Almighty God and turn yourself to Jesus, He can come to your rescue. They can obtain everything for you. And prayer points for you and I. Let us pray to the true worshippers of the Almighty God. Let us pray for the mercy and the goodness of the Almighty God in our lives. So that's an actual point number one. You will not die spiritually if you have given your life to the Almighty God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that's an actual point number two. Your good words will speak for you in this life and the life to come through faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that's an actual point number three. Give your life to the Almighty God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that's an actual point number four. There is no other way to the Almighty God other than through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that's an actual point number five. The focus on serving the Almighty God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Always. You can serve the Almighty God. You can serve the Creator of the world through other means. It is only through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The question to you and I is Is your name in the book of life? Is your name in the book of life? Judge for yourself. If you have mirror sins locking in the crevices of your life, you are a fornicator. Is your name in the book of life? If you are an adulterer, is your name in the book of life? And if you are a self-sex marriage 
person, it's your name in the book of life. If you are into homosexuality, it's your name in the book of life. If you are gay, you are into lesbianism and bisexuality, it's your name in the book of life. If you are the person that is very hypocritical, deceiving other people, saying that you are a Christian, whereas you are not, it's your name in the book of life. Just within yourself. If you are a colleague, Brave consumer. It's your name in the book of life. If you are if you are a marijuana smoker, if you are a hard drug smoker, it's your name in the book of life. If your tongue, all that your tongue can produce is lie, lies and upon lie. It's your name in the book of life. If you are a very selfish person, if you are a murderer, you are a hater, it's your name in the book of life. If you have evil desires towards other people, it's your name in the book of life. You gossip and you slander effortlessly. It's your name in the book of life. To give evil to other people, it's your name in the book of life. If you are into jealousy and envy, it's your name in the book of life. If you have a forgiven spirit, it's your name in the book of life. If you are a witch, you are a necromancer, you are into sorcery, you are a demonic person. And then you see yourself in the world of darkness, you see yourself in the covenant. And then at daybreak, you see yourself as normal. If you are a witch, you are a devil, you are an incarnate, or you are an agent of darkness. Who will your name be in the book of life? It's your name in the book of life. If you are revengeful, you have a revengeful spirit. It's your name in the book of life. If you are an inventor of evil things, it's your name in the book of life. If you are those that are proving other people to do evil and you stay aloof and say, I don't do the evil, but you sponsor them to do evil. I don't do the evil, but the cancer to do it. It's your name in the book of life. If you are an oppressor, you oppress other people. It's your name in the book of life. If you are into self righteousness, what are including our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into your life pattern? It's your name in the book of life. If you are into sowing seed of discord, you talk here. You make brother A or sister A hate brother B or sister B. You go to brother C and then you set him up against sister or brother, brother D and you create friction and you are seen as the only good person. You are seed of this God sower. It's your name in the book of life. If you use your book of cavity for evil, it's your name in the book of life. You challenge people preaching the gospel. You say you can speak, you are an orator. You have the gift of the gab. And because you feel you have the gift of the gab, you take down, you talk down on people that have the spirit of the Almighty God, the spirit that created the world. You challenge them in the open and in public places, and you tell them you try to fight, they cry, they profess they have. Because you feel you have the gift of the gab, you can talk. You are an orator, and you can speak, and you speak all the English, you speak everything against the people of God. It's your name in the book of life, that's what matters. You have senseless assumption, like I said before. You say you are saved, and you keep up your evil, and you say you are going to heaven. It's your name in the book of life with the evil in your life. The violence, the rout, and all the evil in your life, and all of those things, the use of Jesus' best properties. It's your name in the book of life. You dress, now you sit down, and when you sit down like this, everybody seeing your sexy part. Is that, is that right? Right. And then you wear your blouses and they still show your mama regard, is that right? And then you come to the church with all kind of gay dancing, all kind of rapping, all kind of evil. You say everything and you dance and you miss everything together. It's your name in the book of life as a question. Because if you look at all of all these things now, if you do not repent of these things, judgment awaits you. The death sentence may hold. The sentence will have a stronghold over your life. But if you repent of all of these sins, you see, the death sentence, through Christ, you will be free from every one of them. And the Lord is reaching out to you now. The Lord wants you. The Lord is reaching out His love through this message unto you now. Wherever you are, listen to the sound of my voice. In the UK, in the USA, wherever you are, in India, wherever you are, in Africa, in Senegal, in Tanzania, in Nigeria, of course, in Congo, wherever you are, the Lord is reaching out to you right now. In the north of the world, in the south of the world, in the west of the world, in the east of the world, the Lord is reaching out to you right now. That the only Savior, that Jesus Christ, God sent His Savior to the world, that the world may be saved. That we are witness, that we know that God sent His only Son to be the Savior of the world. And this thing has been over 2,000 years ago, even before you were born. And this message is reaching out to you if you had the inkling, you had the privilege of reaching out to people that have died, that are languishing in hellfire today. You will not waste any time right now asking God, renting your heart and your life and your body before the throne and asking for forgiveness of sins and the remission of sins. And say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Now that you can hear me, that means you have the gift of life. Now that you can hear me, that means you have God's favor upon your life. It's only one. It is appointed unto man to die once after that judgment. Now that you have the gift of life, 
Now that you can breathe, now that you can talk, wherever you are right now, open your mouth and say, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord is not bothered about your spiritual condition, whether you are a witch or you are a devil or whatever it is that is in your life. All that he's asking you to do is to say, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Forgive me. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Lord, I know that it's not even committing the sin that makes me a sinner. Adamically, I'm a sinner. And then doing, committing the sin, even having the Adamic nature, is even, is even worse than the situation. Lord have mercy. I promise you I won't go back to evil anymore. Lord have mercy. Open your mouth now and you must pray sincerely. If you do not pray sincerely, then it will not work. It must stem from your heart. It must come from your soul. You must be happy about it. You want to be serious and sincere about it. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And as you're asking for mercy, you will have mercy upon you. You have mercy upon you. If they're intentional about the prayer, Lord have mercy. I won't go back to evil anymore. Lord Jesus, that was he. The scripture has told all that we know that, G, that the Almighty God sent his son to be the savior of the world. Lord, you are the savior of the world. Lord Jesus, you are the savior of the world. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart now. Come into my heart now and save my soul. If you can pray that prayer right now sincerely, it will indeed, it will come to you and it will save your soul. It will take out the root of evil out of your life and it will give you the power of sonship or daughtership. It will give you the power to live for him. If only you can pray sincerely. If only you can pray sincerely. He's listening to you right now. Wherever you are in Caribbean, Wherever you are right now, is listening to you. Trinidad and Tobago, wherever you are right now, is listening to you in the Philippines. It's with listening to you. Wherever you are right now, is listening to you. It's listening to the voice of your heart. And it's looking at cross checking and seeing that your heart, you are serious, you are sincere. If you are not sincere, if you are not sincere, cry out on the Lord. Cry out on the Lord and say, Lord, I want to be sincere. And if you can pray this prayer sincerely, then you, you can be saved. And your name will be listed in the book of life. Father, in Jesus' name, an individual here and across the airwaves that has prayed that prayer sincerely. And you know, Lord, according to your word, you will forgive and enlist that name in the book of life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. You are blessed. You are blessed. And the Lord wants you to minister to you now on you. Wherever you are right now, wherever you are right now, the Lord has saved your soul. He also wants to heal you. He also wants to heal your body. He wants to heal your business. He wants to heal your family life. He wants to heal your spiritual life. He wants to heal your body. He wants to heal every part of your life. Now, I'll give you just a few seconds to talk to the Lord now. The areas you need is healing in your life. Spiritual, health-wise, business-wise, family-wise, the Lord will heal you right now. Talk to the Lord in a few seconds. In Jesus' name, Lord, the people are presented to you, the various areas they need healings. Lord, I pray, disseminate healings according to their request in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we pray. Those having ear problems, Lord, solve. The eyes problem, Lord, solve. The heart problem, Lord, solve. The one that have kidney, liver, respiratory problem, Lord, solve their problems in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Healing in Jesus' name, the soundness of life, soundness of life will come upon them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. Heal the people in their respiratory system. Heal the people in their organs. Heal their lungs. Heal their kidney. Heal their liver. Heal every part of their bodies in Jesus' name. Thank you. Heal their feet. Heal their mouth. Heal their eyes. Heal their brain. Every, every sanity problem disappear in Jesus' name. And the one that I've left over 20 years. And the people are looking for this individual over 20 years. Left home. Lord, I pray there will be joy in that family because this week you will return home in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. An individual that wants to poison his friend over business issue. And your plan is to put poison in this dream at a business meeting. 
Now the Lord has exposed you. I cancel that plan. It will never hold in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to the message. The blessings await you as you obey and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership, and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contact as you click on the select icon. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you.